Hello everyone. Today we are going to solve O levels paper 1 in a session October November 2019 paper 1 1. So let's begin with the first question. So in the first question A part we need to evaluate this expression. First we need to convert the mixed number into improper fraction. So this would be 3 times 7 times 1 is 7 plus 4 is 11. So 11 over 7 and uh, 3 times 11 is 33 over 7. Since the question is in terms of mixed number, so try to keep the answer in terms of mixed number. So we know that uh, 7 times 4 is 28 and 28 plus 5 is 33 out of 7. Now for the B part, we need to evaluate this expression 1.3 times 0 0.3. So if I can do 13 times 3, this would be 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 1 is 3. So this would be 39, but we have uh, 1 and 1, the total 2 decimal places. So we need to move a decimal point 2 units to the left. So the answer would be 0 0.39. Now for question number two, the scattered diagram shows uh, the marks that uh, 12 students each obtained in test A and test B. Okay, so test A marks and test B marks give a reason why it is not appropriate to draw the line of best fit for this uh, diagram. So as you can see that the given scattered diagram is not showing uh, neither a positive correlation or a negative correlation. So we cannot draw the line of best fit. So the reason is there is no correlation between the two set of marks now question number three the diagram shows a net of a solid in a part what is the special mathematical name of the solid so as you can see this is a base and it is a scared base and it's a pyramid so we can say that it is a scare based uh, for this solid, write down the number of vertices. So how many vertices? The scale has four vertices and at the at top we have one more vertex. So total vertices are five. Now for question number four, in A part, we need to factorize this expression. So I can write down as one scale and negative we have 6p whole square so here we are going to use a formula of a square minus b square this would be a plus b this would be uh, a plus b into a minus b this is 1 plus 2p into 1 minus 2p sorry 1 plus uh, 6p and 1 minus 6p now for B part, uh, how can we factorize this expression? So first we need to arrange the terms 4x plus xy plus 3y and plus 12. So let me take x common and we are left with 4 plus y. Now let me take uh, 3 common, we are left with y plus 4. So the factors are y plus 4 and x plus 3 x plus 3 into y plus 4 Question number five, the television program is two hours, 40 minutes long. In A part, it starts at 22.45. Uh, at what time does it finishes? Okay, so this is a starting time. So in starting time, we need to add two hours and 40 minutes and then we need to find at what time it finishes. So 22, 45, if we add two hours and 40 minutes, so it would be five plus zero is five, four plus four is eight. Four plus four is eight. 
and uh, it cannot be 85 minutes so 8 minus 6 would be 2 and we have 1 over here so 22 23 uh, 24 25 so 25 it means 1 25 so at 1 25 the program finishes now for the B part the program contain eight advertisement breaks each of which lasts for three minutes find the fraction of two hours and 40 minutes that is taken by advertisement give your answer in the simplest form so we need to make a fraction so eight advertisement and uh, each lasts for 30 uh, three minutes divides two hours has 60 minutes 2 times 60 and plus 40 minutes so we need to convert all of them into the minutes right so now uh, 8 times 3 would be 24 over 2 times 6 is 12 and 0 plus 40 so 12 plus 40 this would be 160 so 24 divides 160 okay so we need to convert it into simplest form so first we have uh, 2 times 8 is 16 and 0 2 times 1 is 2 2 times 2 is 4 and 2 times 6 is 12 and uh, 2 times 4 is 8 and 0 2 times 3 is 6 2 times 2 is 4 and 0 so this would be 3 out of 20 this is a fraction in simplest form now question number six write these values in order starting with the smallest okay so first we need to convert all of them into uh, decimals so one out of 30 so if I can do 30 over here and one over here we know that 30 times 1 is 30 and 30 times 2 would be 60 and 30 times 3 would be 90 so if I have 0 dot zero we have 100 so 30 times 3 would be 90 and here we are left with 10 and another 0 and bring the 0 down again 30 times 3 would be 90 and again left with 10 and so on so it would be 0 0.0333 0 0.033 and this would be 0 0.03 and 1 by 10 is 0 0.1 5 percent is 5 over 100 and this would be equals to 0 0.05 and how can I convert 2 by 25 so if I can multiply 25 with 4 and 2 with 4 2 times 4 is 8 over 25 times 4 is 100 so 8 over 100 would be 0 0.08 okay now we have 0 0.033 0 0.03 0 0.1 0 0.05 and 0 0.08 so which one is the smallest so as you can see the smallest one is uh, 0 0.03 0 0.03 and then we have 0 0.033 that is 1 out of 30 and after that we have 0 0.05 that is 5 percent and then 0 0.08 that is 2 by 25 and the bigger one is 0 0.1 that is 1 by 10. Now question number seven y is directly proportional to x when okay so y is directly proportional to x it means y is equals to k times x when x is 4 y value is t y is t when x value is 4 so from here the k value is uh, t by 4 yes k is over here and 4 is going to divide now the equation we have is y equals to t by 4 x now find x in terms of t when y is 2 so y is 2 we have t by 4 x we need to find uh, x so from here uh, x would be equals to we have uh, uh, 2 times 4 by t so it would be equals to 8 by t so the value of x in terms of t is 8 out of t now question number 8 by writing each number correct to one significant figure estimate the value of so for one significant figure 5 and 9 it would be 60 and whole square over 
2 and 0, it keeps 20 times 0 0.9 and again x0, it's a 0 0.9. Okay, so 60 square is 60 times 60, so this would be 3600 and uh, 2 times 9 is 18 and 0, this would be 180 or 18.0. So this would be 3600 over 18. Okay, now let me convert it into simplest form. 2 times 9 is 18, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 8 is 16 and double zero. And 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 6 is 18 and double zero. 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 2 is 6 and double zero. So the answer in the simplest form is 200. Now question number 9, solve the simultaneous equations. So we have given a system of linear equations. We can solve it by method of substitution or elimination. So I would like to use a method of uh, substitution. This is my equation 1 and equation 2. So I can say from equation 1, I can find x would be equals to 1 minus 4 y. This is my equation number 3. So now let me put this x value into my second equation. This would be 3 times x plus 2y would be equals to 8. So 3 minus 12y plus 2y equals to 8. So this would be minus 10y equals to 8 minus 5. So 8 minus 3. This would be equals to 5. And y would be equals to 5 out of negative 10. So 5 times 1 is 5. 5 times 2 is 10. This would be minus 1 by 2. So we have got the y value that is negative 1 by 2. Now let me substitute that y value into my third equation to get the x. So x would be equals to 1 minus 4 into minus 1 by 2. 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, and negative times negative is positive. 1 plus 2, this would be equals to 3. So the value of x is 3. Now question number 10 in A part. Amir buys a camera for $250 and sells it for $200. Calculate his percentage loss. So to calculate the percentage loss, we need to find the, the total loss, that is this, uh, the price he bought, subtract the price he sell, divide by the original price, and times by 100. So this would be equals to 50 over 250 and times by 100. So 0 is cancelled with 0. 5 times 1 is 5. 5 times 5 is 25. And we have 100 divides 5. Now 5 times 1 is 5. 5 times 2 is 10 and 0. So it would be 20% loss. Now for the B part, Mira's invest uh, some money at a rate of 2% per year simple interest. How many years does it take for her investment to double? We need to find the number of years. Okay, so let me use a formula for the simple interest that is amount equals to investment into 1 plus RT. So investment is double. So let's say the investment is X and when the investment is double, it would be 2X. So the amount is double. Amount would be 2x and the investment is just x. And 1 plus interest rate is 2%, 2 by 100 into time t we need to find. Okay, so we need to cancel x and x. And now we have um, 2 would be equals to 100 plus 2t dividing by 100. Right? Now let me do a cross multiplication. So 100 times 2 would be 200. This would be equals to 100 plus 2t. So 200 subtract 100 dividing by 2. This would be equals to t. So we have 100 by 2. This would be equals to t. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 5 is 10 and 0. So it will take 50 years to double the investment. Now question number 11 in A, we need to simplify this equation. 7 minus 3 times 5 is 15k and plus 3 times minus minus plus and 3 times 2 would be 6. 
so (uh) seven and (uh) plus six this would be thirteen minus fifteen K okay now for the second part we need to solve the equation it's a quadratic equation we will get two X values so we have let me take X common we have five X minus three would be equals to zero so here X would be equals to zero and five X minus three would be equals to zero from here five X equals to positive of three and X would be equals to three by five so the two X values are zero and three by five Question number 12, in A part, evaluate this expression. So when the bases are same, we can add the exponents. So 3 minus 2 plus 4. So this would be equals to 3 squared. This would be equals to 9. Now for the B part, we need to evaluate this. 3 minus something exponent 0 is 1. So 3 minus 1 would be 2. And for the C part, we need to simplify this. We need to take 4 out and when the bases are same we can add the exponents again 1 by 2 plus 1 by 4 so this would be 4 y let me take the LCM 4 2 times 2 is 4 and plus 1 so this would be 4 y 3 by 4 yes Question number 13 in A part, write the number in the standard form. Okay, so shift the decimal point to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4. 2.3 times 10 power negative 4 because we move to the right. Now for the B part, evaluate this and give your answer in the standard form. Okay, so for this we need to make the uh, exponent same. We have 9 and 8. Okay, so let me make both 9. So 8 times 10 exponent 9 subtract 0 0.9. If I shift the decimal point to the uh, left, I can add 1 and 8. So it would be 9. So we have 8 subtract 0 0.9 and then times by 10 exponent 9. So 8 take away 8.0 subtract 0 0.9. We have 7 over here and 10. 10 minus 9 is 1 and 7 minus 0 is 7. So the answer would be 7.1 times 10 exponent 9. Yes. Question number 14. Uh, we have P and Q in A part. Find the highest common factor HCF of P, Q. Okay, so P is basically 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 5 times 5. And Q is um, 2 times 3 times 3 times 5. Okay, so for HCF, we need to pick just the common factor. So this 2 is common, this 3 is common, and this 5 is common. So we can say that the HCF is, um, of PQ is 2 times 3 times 5. So 2 times 3 is 6, and 6 times 5 is 30. So at CF of P and Q is 30. Now for the B part, find the lowest common multiple LCM of P, Q and 21. Give your answer as the product of prime factors. So first we need to find the prime factorization of 21. So 3 times 7 is 21 and 7 times 1 is 7. So the prime factorization of 21 is 3 times 7. Okay, the prime factorization of P is uh, 2q times 3 times 5 square. For q, we have 2 times 3 square times 5. And for 21 is 3 times 7. Okay, now we need to pick the LCM of P, Q and 21. So in LCM, we need to pick the um, highest power. So for 2, the power is 3 and here the power is 1. So we can say 2 cube 
for 3 the highest power is 2 and uh, here we have uh, the common factor for 3 we have 3 3 square and 3 so we have 3 square and for 5 5 square and 5 so 5 is square and we have just 7. So this is the LCM of P, Q and um, 21. Now for the C part, find the smallest integer n such that P times n is a square number. Okay, so P times some n is a square number. So we know that P is 2 cube times 3 times 5 square. Okay, so we need to find n such that p times of n is a square number. So the number is any number is a square number whose square root exists, right? So it means the exponent of that number must be even. Okay, so here uh, we can uh, see here the two exponent is odd. So if we, I, we can take two, so when we do the product of p and n, so here the two exponent would be 4. This would be even. 5 exponent is even, that is 2. How can we make the 3 exponent is 1 here? So if I can take 3, so here the 3 exponent is 2 here and the 5 exponent is also 2. So this p n is a square number because all the exponents are even and the number n is 2 times 3. This would be equals to 6. Now question number 15 in A part in the diagram three um, small triangles are shaded shade one more small triangle to give a diagram that has exactly one line of symmetry. Okay, so how can we make it one line of symmetry? So if I can draw this line as a line of symmetry, so this would be identical to this. And the other, this would be this. So this triangle must be shaded. Right. So this is a line of symmetry. So both the sides are identical. So this triangle must be shaded. Now for the B part. In the diagram, the three triangles and a and the circle from a uh, figure that has a rotational symmetry of order 3. So when it has a rotational symmetry of order 3, it means circle is 360. 360 is dividing by 3. This would be equals to 120. Okay. So, and we know that this is a center. So this, these are the radius of a circle. So these sides are same so it means all the three triangles are uh, isosceles triangle right and these inner angles are 88 this angle is also 88 and the rest of these angles are same right okay so this is x so this angle is also equals to x degree now for the first part find x so for x we need to use this triangle so we can say first angle is x the other angle is x and the third angle is 88 and this would be equals to 180 degrees sum of all three angles of a triangle is 180 it is isosceles triangle so two angles must be same when two sides are same two angles must be same so 2x would be equals to 180 subtract 88 so let me do it 180 subtract 88 this would be 7 over here and 10 10 minus 8 is uh, 2 and we have 17 minus 8 this would be equals to 9 so 92 so x would be equals to 92 divides 2 so 2 ones are 2 times 1 is 2 2 times uh, 4 is 8 and 2 times 6 is 12 so the angle x is 46 degrees now for the second part we need to find y so here is y so from this triangle from one leg to the new triangle this whole angle is 120 degree because it is the order of rotational symmetry is 3 right so if this whole angle is 120 so this 120 the sum of 88 and y Right. So how can we find out y? So angle y would be equals to 120 
120 subtract 88 so 120 subtract 88 this would be 1 and 10 minus 8 is 2 and 8 minus 11 is 3 so the angle y is 32 degrees Now for question number 16, in A part, in the Venn diagram, shade the region which represents C intersection A union B whole complement. So we have A and B. So A union B is this and its complement is the region that is outside and its intersection with C. So it means this portion is shaded. Yes. Now for the B part, we have given the universal set. T and V. List the members of T intersection V uh, complement. So first we need to find what is V complement and then we can find T intersection V complement. So V complement is the, are the numbers that are other than V, right? So A, A, B, B, C is not in V. So C, we have D, then E, and then F, G, cancel uh, H is cancel I is cancel and then J this is V complement now let me find T intersection with V complement T intersection V complement is T is B D F H and J and its intersection with the V complement is C E F and J so what elements are common F and J is common so we can say that the member of T intersection B complement is F and J. Now for the second part, find the number of T union V. So first let me find T union V. So we have A, then B. So A, B in both. Uh, A, B, no C. And then D, uh, E, F, yes, F, G, H in both, I and J. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 8 numbers are in T union V. Now for question number 17, the diagram shows uh, the line uh, x plus y equals to 8. So which line is x plus y equals to 8? So if I can rewrite this line, y would be equals to 8 minus x. So basically 8 is the y-intercept. So y-intercept 8 is positive here. So this line is representing x plus y equals to 8, right? And y equals to 1 by 2. Um, x. So this line uh, yeah, this line is uh, x plus y equals to 8 and this one would be, if I can say y equals to 1 by 2, x, x is equals to 0. So this vertical line is x equals to 0 and this horizontal line is y equals to 0, right? Okay, the regions uh, between the lines are labeled with letters. In the A part, write down the labels of the region which is defined by these three inequalities okay x plus y is less than 8 okay so x plus y is less than 8 this region so all the letters b f c g h d lower right for second y is less than 1 by 2x y is less than 1 by 2x now these letters g h and d and then y is greater than zero now y is greater than zero so only g so only g comes in the region okay now for the b part write down all the inequalities which define region e okay so region e so we have e so the inequalities that define the region e as we can see when x is greater than zero this inequality x is greater than zero and when uh, x plus y is more than 8, so x plus y is greater than 8. And the last one, x, y is greater than 1 by 2, x. y is greater than half x. Question number 18. Um, the masses of 120 serial packs. 
120 serial packets were measured. Uh, the results are summarized in the community frequency diagram. So in the A part, use the diagram to estimate the median. Median we know is half of the value, half of 120. This would be equals to 60th value. So we need to find where is the 60th value. Going to the graph, draw the straight line from 60 and finding out the 60th value that is 501. So the 60th value we can say is 501 grams. Now for second part, the interquartile range. Interquartile range is basically Q3 subtract Q1. And Q3 is 3 by 4 of 120. So 4 times 1 is 4, 4 times 3 is 12 and 0, 3 times 3 is 9 and 0. So we need to find the 90th value. And um, Q1 is 1 by 4 of 120. Again, 4 times 1 is 4, 4 times 3 is uh, 12 and 0. So we need to find the 30th value. And then we can subtract both of them. Right. So let me find the 90th value first. So 90 is in between 80 and 100. So 1, 2. So here is 90 in the middle. Let me draw the straight line. 90 and this is 502 so 502 is the 90th value the upper quartile and the lower quartile is 30th value 30th value is 1 2 over here draw a straight line from 30 and it would be 5024 this would be 500 point Yes. Okay. Now substituting the value Q3 is 502 subtract 500.4. We will get the interquartile range. So 50, sorry, 502.0 and 500.4. Let me subtract both of them. So this would be uh, 1 over here and 10, 10 minus 4 is 6 and 1 minus 0 is 0 and um, sorry 1, 0 minus 0 is 0 and 5 minus 5 is 0. So the answer is 1.6 grams. Okay. Now for the B part, the measur the measuring scale were used were faulty. The measured masses were all 0 0.8 grams more than the actual masses. Write down the median and the interquartile range of the actual masses. Okay, so as we can see, the median before is 501. Now we need to subtract 0 0.8 to get the actual median. So for median 501 sorry 501.0 and 0 0.8 we need to subtract we have 0 over here and 10 10 minus 8 would be equals to 2 0 minus 0 is um, 0 we have 0 and we have 5 so the median is 500.2 now, interquartile range stays the same. Why? Because uh, we have to subtract 0 0.8 from the upper quartile as well and the lower quartile. The same quantity subtracting from upper and the lower quartile. So it stays the same. That is 1.6. Or we can check as well. So if I can subtract 0 0.8 from 502. 502.0, 0 0.8. So let me subtract it. This is the upper quartile. This would be 1 and uh, 10 minus 8 would be 2. 1, 0 and 5. This would be the upper quartile now. Now let me find the lower quartile. That would be 500.4 and then subtract 0 0.8. This would be 4 over here and 10 and then 10 cancel with 9 again 10 10 cancel with 9 and 14 so 14 minus 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 this would be 6 
point nine nine and four. Now we need to subtract the upper and the lower quartile to get the interquartile range. Five zero one point two subtract with four nine nine point six. Zero over here and twelve six. Um, uh, twelve minus six is six, right? And we have. 4 over here, 10, and then 9 over here, and then 10. 10 minus 9 is 1. 9 minus 9 is 0. 4 minus 4 is 0. So you can see the interquartile range stays the same. That is 1.6 grams. Question number 19. The function f of x is given to us. We need to evaluate f of 1 by 2. So just substitute x equals to 1 by 2. So f of 1 by 2 would be equals to 5 subtract 1 by 2 over 1 by 2. So here we have um, 2 times 5 is 10. 10 minus 1 is 9 by 2 over 1 by 2. So we have 9 by 2 times 2 by 1. 2 is cancelled with 2. The answer is 9. Now for B part, find F inverse of X. So F inverse of X, we need to put Y equals to F of X. And then substitute, uh, replace X, uh, the variable Y with X and the variable X with Y. And we need to solve for Y. So let me do a cross multiplication. So X, Y would be equals to 5 minus Y. So we have to solve for Y. So shift the Y terms to the left. So X, Y plus Y would be equals to 5. Let me take Y common. So X plus 1 would be equals to 5. And from here, Y is equals to 5 over X plus 1. And this Y is representing F inverse of X. So this is 5 over x plus 1. Now question number 20. The table shows the results when a dice is thrown 300 times. Number of dice and uh, the frequency is given. The relative frequency of throwing a 4 is uh, 0 0.2 for 4. The relative frequency is 0 0.2. For A part, find the value of P and the value of Q. Okay, so the frequency for uh, 4 is P. So we have given the relative frequency. Okay, the formula for the relative frequency is equals to frequency over number of thrones. Okay. So since the relative frequency we know for 4 is 0 0.2 and the frequency for 4 is P and the number of thrones are 300, so we can find the value of P by doing a cross multiplication 300 times 0 0.2. 2 times 3 would be 6 and double 0 and to one decimal place it would be 60.0. So the answer for P is 60, right? Now for P value is 60. Now let me find the value for Q. For Q, the, the total frequency must be equals to 300, right? So let me add all of them and then we can find the Q by subtracting with 300. So let me add it 55, 42, 45, 60 and 50. So 5 and 5 is 10, 11, 12, 1 and 2, and 6 plus 4, this would be 10, and 5 plus 5 is 10, and 4 plus 1 would be 5, so it would be 25. So 252. And then subtracting with 300, so 300 subtract 252. We have 2 over here, 10, and then 9 over here, and 10. 10 minus 2 would be 8. Five, uh, 9 minus 5, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This would be 4. And 2 minus 2 would be 0. So the value for Q is uh, 48. And P value is 60. Now for the B part, how many times would you expect to throw a 2 uh, when this dice is thrown 1,000 times. Okay, so for 2, the, uh, the frequency for 2 is 42. And the number of thrones are 300. 
and times by 1000 right so we can cancel the zeros first and then we have uh, 420 divides 3 3 times 1 is 3 3 times 1 is 3 3 times um, 4 is 12 and 0 so 140 is the answer Now question number 21, in the diagram, the points uh, A, B, C, D, E lies on a circle center at O. Uh, the point B, O, E, B, O, E lies on a straight line and this is a diameter of a circle, right? A, B is parallel to D, E. A to B, this line is parallel to E, uh, D. So if I can extend the parallel lines, AB is parallel to DE. This is given to us. And angle DEO is 53. DEO. This angle is 53. Okay. Now for A part, find X. We have angle X that is at the center. So this is easy. As we know that the angle on the circumference is 53. So the angle on this at the center must be twice the angle at the circumference. So the value of X is 2 times of 53. 2 times of 53. So 2 times 3 is uh, 6 and 2 times 5 is 10. So the answer for X is 1 or 6. degrees now for b part find y so let's see where is y we have y over here and if i consider the quadrilateral b c d e this quadrilateral and the opposite angle of c is e as we know that the opposite angles of a quadrilateral always sum up to 180 so we, it means y plus 53 equals to 180 to get y, we need to do 180 subtract 53, right? So 180 subtract 53, 180 subtract 53, we have uh, 7 over here and 10, 10 minus 3 is 7, 7 minus 5 is 2 and we have 1. So the angle y is 127 degrees. Now for c part, find z. So where is that? That is over here. So for Z, we need to use the concept of the parallel lines that is given to us that AB is parallel to ED. So when two lines are parallel, so their opposite angles must be same and they joins with the same segment that is BE. So if this angle is 53, so angle Z is also 53. Now for D part, find D. Okay, so this angle is 53. Okay, so as we can see, A, this is a 90 degree angle. If we consider the triangle A, B, E, we have 90, 53 and T, the sum up to 180. We can easily find out the value for T. So let me do it. So we have 90 plus 53 plus angle T would be equals to 180 degree. So what is 90 plus 53? So 90 and 53, we have 3, 5, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, so 143. So T would be equals to 180, subtract 143. So if I can do it over here, 180, subtract 143, we have 7 over here and 1, and 10 minus 3 would be 7, 7 minus 4, 5, 6, 7, it's 3, and 1 minus 1 is 0. So the angle T is 37 degrees. Now for question number 22. Uh, we have given a triangle ABC. The diagram shows the triangle ABC in A part uh, using a pair of compasses and straight edge construct in first part the perpendicular bisector of AC. Okay, so let me draw the perpendicular bisector of AC. For this, we need to use a compass and open the compass more than half of the length of AC, put it on C, and draw an arc. outside inside and outside do the same put it on a 
and draw an arc outside and then inside okay so we have the two points of intersection so this is a perpendicular bisector of AC right okay now for second part the locus of a point that are equidistant from a b and a c so basically we need to find the perpendicular bisector of angle a this is a b and this is a c okay so first we need to cut a b put it on a and cut a b and then cut a c put it on the first arc and draw another one then put it on the second and cut the first one so this point is the angle bisector of angle A mm, yes this point okay now for the B part the perpendicular bisector of AC meets bc at p okay so this said the perpendicular bisector of ac meets bc at point p so it means this is the point p this point is p and q is the point on bc that are equidistant from ab and ac so this is the point q on bc okay mark and label the points p and q on the diagram we did and measure pq now we need to find the length of pq in terms of centimeters so let me find it this as you can see what would be this three one two three three point three centimeter so the length of pq is 3.3 centimeter now question number 23 the diagram is a speed time graph representing the part of the train's journey the train uh, slows down uniformly from a speed of 40 meter per second to a speed of 24 meter per second so 40 to 24 uh, of um, in a time of 20 seconds it then slow down uniformly for further 40 seconds until it stops now in a part find the deceleration between t equals to 20 and t equals to 60 okay so deceleration between 20 to 60 so deceleration is basically the gradient so between 20 to 60 the speed is 24 so we can say that the deceleration is equals to 24 divides this from 20 uh, to 60 this would be equals to time taken is 40 so 24 divides 40 so we can say that 4 times uh, 6 is 24 and 4 times 10 is 40 so we have uh, uh, 2 times 3 is 6 and 2 times 5 is 10 so 3 by 5 yes meter per second square now for the b part find the speed when t is 50 okay so time is 50 seconds closer to 60 there is 50 and we need to find this speed let's say x this speed is x okay so for this if i consider the two triangles this triangle and this triangle and these two are the similar triangles because when one triangle is inside of the other the two triangles are similar so if we use the concept of similar triangle this length is 24 and this length is x so we can say smaller and then bigger so x over 24 would be equals to this length is this would be 50 so from 50 to 60 it is just 10 seconds and uh, from 20 to 60 this would be 40 seconds okay let me do a cross multiplication and find out the value for x so if i can write down over here x would be equals to 10 over 40 and times 24 0 is cancelled with 0 4 times 1 is 4 4 times 6 is 24 so 
the value for x is um, the x uh, sorry the speed is um, 6 meter per second now for the third part find the distance travel from t equals to 0 to t equals to 20 so distance traveled is always equals to area under the curve from 0 to 20 we have 0 to 20 we need to find the area under the curve so this curve follows a triangle and a rectangle right so what is the area of this triangle so area of this triangle is half base is 0 to 20 and the height is 40 to 24 so 40 subtract 24 we have 3 over here and um, we have 10 and 10 minus 4 is 6 and 3 minus 2 would be 1 so it would be 16 so this is the area 2 times 1 is 2 2 times 10 is 20 and 10 minus 16 would be equals to 160 so 160 is the area of this triangle now let me find the area of this rectangle so area of this rectangle is area of a rectangle is length times width so it would be 20 and this is 24 so 20 times 24 this would be equals to 2 times 4 is 8 and 2 times 2 is 4 and 0 so 480 so we need to add 480 and 160 to get uh, the distance traveled from 0 to 20 seconds so we have the distance traveled would be 480 plus 160 480, 160, 0 plus 0 is 0, 6 plus 8 is 14, 4, 5 and 6, 640 meters is the distance traveled from 0 to 20 seconds. Question number 24, we have given the two matrices A and B. In the first part, we need to evaluate uh, 2 times a minus b okay so first we need to find 2 times of a so 2 times of a is 2 times 3 is 6 2 times 2 is 4 2 times 1 is 2 2 times 0 is 0 subtract the b is negative 2 3 1 and 0 okay now let me evaluate it 6 minus minus 2 negative negative would be positive 6 plus 2 would be 8 2 minus 1 would be 1 minus 4 minus 3 is minus 7 and 0 minus 0 is 0. So the answer is 8, 1, negative 7 and 0. Okay. Now for B part, find A inverse. So inverse of a matrix is equal to adjoint of a matrix over the determinant of a matrix. So first we need to find the determinant. Determinant is a cross multiplication. 3 times 0 is 0. Subtract. Uh, 2 times minus 2 times 1 is minus 2 so it would be 2 so this is 1 by 2 and for adjoint we need to change the positions 3 0 would be 0 3 and we need to change the signs 1 minus 2 would be minus 1 and positive 2 right so this is the inverse of a matrix a 1 by 2 0 2 minus 1 and 3 Okay, now for the C part, find the matrix X such that A times of X is a column matrix. So when the product of two matrices gives a column matrix and A is a 2 cross 2 matrix, it means X must be a column matrix. So we can say A is 3 minus 2, 1, 0. X is A, B. This would be equals to and minus 4 let me find the value for a b this would be equals to x we need to find the matrix x that is a b okay um, now rows are going to multiply with the columns so we can say that 3 times of a and 1 times of b this would be equals to 3 a plus b and uh, minus 2 a plus 0 this would be equals to 3 and minus 4 now we have two equations the first is 3a plus b would be equals to 3 this is the first equation and minus 2a would be equals to minus 4 so a would be equals to minus 4 by minus 2 
so we can say that 2 times 1 is 2 2 times 2 is 4 so a would be equals to 2 so the value for a is positive of 2 now let me substitute that a value into my first equation so from here 3 times 2 plus b equals to 3 b would be equals to 3 minus 3 times 2 is 6 so b would be equals to negative of 3 so this is the value for b now the matrix x would be equals to a b that is 2 and negative 3 question number 25 in the diagram b is the midpoint of o d so b is the midpoint of o to d if it is a midpoint it means if o b and b d both are equal if o b is b then b to d is also equals to b right okay o a ratio a c o to a and a to c is in the ratio 1 and 3 so if o a is a then a c must be 3 of a this is downward okay uh, o a is a and o b is b this is given to us now in a part express as simply as possible in terms of a and or b the first o c o to c is o to a plus a to c right so o c is o a plus a c o to a is a and a to c is 3a so the total would be 4a right now for second we need to find c d c to d is basically c to o and o to d so c d is c o plus o d we got o c that is 4a and uh, c o would be minus 4a right so minus 4a now let me find od o to d is ob plus bd this is b plus b this is 2b so the answer is 2b minus 4a now for the b part p is the point on cd where cp is 3 by 4 of cd okay so p is the point on uh, cd so p is a point on cd um, such that c to p is 3 by 4 of c d uh, in first part express a p as simple as possible in terms of a and or b okay a to p what is a p a to p is a to c and c to p okay so a p is a c plus c p okay so what is a c a to c is 3 a 3a plus cp is 3 by 4 of cd so this is 3 by 4 of cd so what is cd this is cd 2b minus 4a okay so this would be 3a plus 3 by 2b minus 3a so we can cancel the positive and the negative 3a so the answer would be 3 by 2 B okay now for the second part find a P ratio D B D okay so what is a P a P is 3 by 4 of B sorry 3 by 2 of B ratio B to D okay B to D is just B this is just B so we can cancel the B so it means 3 ratio 2 is the answer right now what special type of quadrilateral is a b d p okay a b d p so let me connect a b first a b d p this is a quadrilateral so you can see it is a trapezium so the name of this special quadrilateral is a trapezium so this is a last question of our paper if you have any queries please let me know in a comment section and subscribe to my channel thank you for watching see you next time take care